The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're going to be using Ableton 11 to produce a beat from scratch. And this beat is going to be used in the next episode of Kara's songwriting from scratch. And I wanted to produce something that was more pop leaning since in the last video, we created an EDM top line. So for this, I just want to create a simple beat, arrange it out so that Kara can songwrite over it in the follow-up video that I'll be adding to the description of this video once that new video is up on Kara's channel. But for now, let's jump right into making our beat. The very first place that I like to start when I make a beat is to tap out a tempo in my head. And I'm feeling something kind of down tempo, so I'm just gonna click on this tap button. And it's suggesting something around 95. And I wanna start off this beat with an 808. So I'm gonna go through the whole loop's disrespectful 808s. And I'm gonna drop my favorite, I'm gonna drop something that is kind of in a higher register, not too distorted on a sampler. That one sounds nice and clean. Let's just double click it. A really great trick when you're starting with 808 samples is to just drop a tuner after it so you can see how it bends. Cause a lot of them aren't like a straight note. Like you can see this one like scoops up a little bit and then ends right on the note, which is perfect. So now let's try and figure out what key we wanna be in. Now that might not have been the tempo that I clicked in and I wasn't even recording, but Ableton has a very handy trick here that records even when you're not recording. So we can just hit that and here's all of what I was just playing even without a click or anything. And when I'm playing in a bass line, my goal is to make the metronome feel funky. And that means not always being directly on the grid. And when you're making very sparse tracks like a pop song, where the beat lands is really just as important as what notes you're picking in the bass line itself. Uh, being directly on the grid often leaves your tracks feeling flat and lifeless. Your style is really all about where off the grid you end up being. So let's just listen through and find some that we just felt sounded good without quantizing it, and then maybe we'll just tighten it up a little bit. Let's take a look at what's going on here just in this measure. I really like the swing of the note placement just kind of by accident. And this note's a little bit early. And let's put just the downbeat on the downbeat. And maybe we'll just slide this one back. It seems like I've already started jamming in E minor. So my favorite shortcut here in new Ableton 11 is being able to select a key. And let's see if I was right, E minor. And you can see highlighted in blue are all the notes that would work in scale of E minor. You could even fold it to the scale so that you can't put it on any of the notes outside of E minor. Really handy for just guessing and seeing what notes you might like instead of just knowing and playing exactly. Let's turn the scale off. I'm actually try taking this and transposing it all up one note to F. this a lot. Next thing I'm going to do is just give this a color. I always like having my 808s be a red color. So let's just do that and we'll right click and assign that to the clip color too. And let's jump into a drum kit and maybe let's add a little bit of groove to this. I'm going to go into Hot Tropics 1. Let's go into the drum loops. be perfect let's drop this into our project and we're just going to synchronize it to our current tempo by hitting warp typing in the original tempo down here 
And that's a really quick way to synchronize any loop into your Ableton project. And sometimes you just gotta check and make sure that the loop goes all the way to the end. And then you can hit this loop button right here. Let's actually tighten this loop up a little bit by switching the transients beat slicing mode to forwards only, and let's shorten it so that it cuts it at the transient. Now let's also pitch it down. I might open this loop up a little bit more. It doesn't need to hit quite so many times. I think this one's kind of unnecessary. And let's just filter this a little bit. It doesn't need to stand out quite so much, especially in the beginning of a song. To really complete this groove, I just wanna add a simple snap. So let's go back into our drum kits. I'll pull something out of the new Raw Hits 3. Drum shots, snaps. I like that one a lot. Let's drop it onto this channel by just double clicking it. And let's zoom in, we can cut this little bit of uh, delay out. And let's add release just like we did before. I don't want them to cut off when I let go. And let's just record in some snaps. do something fancy where that fourth snap should have been just because you know putting four snaps in there is a little bit too predictable and i am going to quantize these i know i didn't do the baseline but i feel like for the backbeat but i'm not going to quantize it 100 as you can see i only have it at 50 percent and let's also do like a real short snap for here and a real short one right here again I wanna complement this with like a little reverse snap going up into it. I'm trying to find one that's already got like a good reverb tail in there so I don't have to go and do it myself. I like that one. So we're not actually gonna use the snap, we're gonna use the reverb from it. So I'm gonna zoom in and just crop the snap out of there. And then I got caps lock on and I hit the letter R and that way it reverses it. And let's just fade this in and make this a little bit louder. And I want this to lead up into that short snap. So I like the contrast of having this long lead up into a short little sample. And we can even fade it in a little bit longer so it doesn't start right away. Hey. Maybe we just wanna fill this in with a nice hard kick drum. <laughs> Not that hard. I like this one, let's just make a new MIDI track, double click it, and we got a kick going now. So let's just duplicate this section. And I don't actually want these drums to come in yet. Maybe just the snaps. And then let's duplicate this. So now we're just getting into like a little bit of arrangement. They have this like arrangement overview thing. I don't really like it. So I'm gonna hide it by hitting Command Option O. And now we have that empty spot where the snap would have been. And I'm just gonna put a clap in there, but an organic one. Let's try a rim. Put a nice release on it. And let's put this right on the bar. I'm actually gonna slip this to the right a little bit. And this to the right a little bit. And we can loop this. And let's have this last measure be just the bass. The next thing I want to do is create some chords that work with this bass line that we got going. I'm going to create a MIDI channel and let's go find an instrument in Omnisphere. 
And maybe I'm gonna pull up like a guitar. Let's try making chords off of this bass line. Baseline for the chord part. And then we'll go back to the groove. And we'll bring in the groove like here, back like this. And let's try and come up with some chords to go over this baseline. Let's just copy that in because we already did a good job playing that. Let's try copying these to the nearest sixteenth note. And let's just join these, make them a loop. Let's put this back in our scale of F minor. Let's bring a kick drum back in. I'm gonna go grab a kick out of the kit. Raw hits three. And let's have a kick drum for this whole section and let's do a little loop right here. And that's a cool kick drum pattern. And that's gonna give this the energy that it needs to feel like a hook. I'm just gonna quantize this to the near 16th note. And again, we're not quantizing this 100%. For the kick, I'm just doing 87%. Let's go bring in some faster percussion loops. I'm gonna go back into Hot Tropics 1. Let's go into the organic loops. Try pulling this loop in, and again, we're just gonna double click it, snap it into the tempo of our song, and let's turn our loop on. And this is where I wanna start getting creative with how we make things stand out, like the kick and the main snare. So I'm gonna drop my compressor on here, and I'm actually gonna sidechain this loop to the kick channel that we just created. Very simply by doing that. And let's just drag this down. Let's also shorten our kick a little bit. And make our kick a little closer to the beginning. Let's try side chaining this to our rim channel too. And I want to see what happens if we sidechain our 808 to this too. I might even speed this up a little bit. Let's try 105 instead of 99. 102 feels good. That side chain really helps everything pump up and down nicely with the kick and the, the rim. I think I'm gonna use that in a couple more spots. Let's also try a hat loop. We could take one of these really fast ones and let's just layer it in. And this is 128 beats per minute. Just stretch it in time like that. And let's do forwards only and let's zoom out and make our loop full length and turn the loop button on. Hey. So now we've got a little bit of party going on here. Let's go into our textures and effects, and let's just add some little sweepy noises that'll lead up into this. All that, that one sounds good too. 
And maybe one on the downbeat. Let's put that on the second beat and we'll put some other effect on the downbeat. So let's take this from the top. I'm going to shrink all my channels. Let's also turn the velocity down on these. And then it goes into our little melodic section. Do your 808s sound like floppy trash? Are you tired of boring bass lines that just don't hit right? Introducing Disrespectful 808s, the all new collection of 808 bass samples so disrespectful you might just get offended too. Disrespectful 808s is available now only at holoops.com. And I want to tease this kick pattern. This is kind of an obscure, unpredictable, broken up kick pattern. I want to give it a little bit of relevance here in the earlier part. Gives it that bounce. And let's also paste our old friends the side chain onto this. And this. full mount, maybe just like 70%. Maybe I'll do like a little pitch bend thing like that too. By default in Omnisphere, the pitch bend is kind of this awkward amount of plus two down two. I guess it's just awkward for this case because I want to do plus 12, minus 12. This is one long MIDI clip, or I guess it's a loop going twice, but now it's one long one because I just hit Command J. Let's open up our MIDI control pitch bend and let's just have it kind of fall off going like that. And just to make sure that it starts normally, we'll just do a little quick like that. And I also want this to completely mute instead of having that reverb tail go off. So I'm gonna show automation on this whole Omnisphere and I'm gonna automate Omnisphere off. Instead of the channel mute, I would much rather just automate like a little instrument on the channel itself. And I'm gonna take this guitar pad and let's kind of turn this into a more solid bass. I know it started out as a guitar, but I'm kind of feeling something a little bit more boomy. So let's try going into Serum. And I'm going to pull up a preset pack that we just released with Kara of all these presets made out of her voice in Serum, resampled as wavetables. And let's pull up Kara for Serum 2. And I'm going to go into, let's go into the bass section. It's a little bit too distorted. I just want like a night. Let's try turning the reverb down just a little bit on this. I think I'm going to use some of these vocal samples from Urban Beats too. I might just make like a little impulse instrument and load up a couple samples in here. It's a fun little way to just jam out with a few. Put that on middle C. That one's cool too. I might just use this on the... And then we can make it shortened. Let's shorten this one too. Oh, that's cool. I might even drop this on the note. I might take that bendy and just go here and then we can just kind of cross fade them. So it lasts out as long as it needs to. That's a really cool effect that I might just have auto panning in the background. Let's do pitch and modulation, auto pan. And we can just loop that again. And let's just turn the volume down on that a little bit. That's a neat little vocal sample. And as all the other main sounds in this, I want them to pump to the kick and the snare. 
Same thing with these. We're just really copying and pasting this all over the place. Another plugin that I want to do some more bendy stuff with is this effect tricks, and that's going to do a little record stop effect at the end of every loop that I choose. And I can make the record stop happen right here, the vinyl. And we can make the speed a little bit different, like... Uh... So I'm going to save all this. And let's go back. Let's listen to what we have in the beginning. So we got a small, sparse, light intro to sing over. And we bring in some percussions right here. Cool. And now for the second verse, I want to do something that combines the beginning part, but has a little bit more groove to it. So I'm going to hit Command-Shift-D, and we're going to copy everything over. And I want all these grooves to stay going. I don't want it to just feel like the groove stop for the second verse. So now that we've got our basic arrangement laid out, now would be a good time to enter some markers. And a really quick, easy way to enter a marker is just by right clicking below the numbers on your timeline and saying add locator. And you can even right click on it and rename it. And we can call this first one, depending on what we're feeling in the next video. When we go and write this track on Kara's channel, might start here. Um, that's something that we'll worry about when we're songwriting. And then I want my pre-chorus to be this part right here, where the chords start happening. Pre-chorus one. And then this would be our chorus one. And then we're going to go into right into verse two right here. And let's just drag this right on the line. I, I still want the beat to be there in verse two, but I want it to feel like a pause. Like you're not sure if it's going to be there. And then it's like, oh yeah, we're still jamming. So we're coming out of the hook right here. And then we hit him with the second verse right here. And then it goes. And then maybe we'll hit him with a snap too. And we'll just have all these come back in here. And maybe even some hi-hats. There we go. Just a little surprise in the arrangement. We didn't really rearrange it. We just added a little switch up by taking the drums out. We're going to call this pre-chorus two. And this is the really the first part of the song that doesn't have any drums at all, which is cool. You don't need to have drums going the whole time. So pre-chorus two, and now let's add a lo locator, and this is chorus two. Let's actually duplicate the length of this because we're going to have a post-chorus after this. And depending on whether we want this song to be longer or not, we may add a bridge and another chorus. That's another thing that we kind of want to feel out in the songwriting process. But for today, like I said, we're making a beat. We're just taking our first loop and translating it into a finished arrangement. Let's jump through some sound effects and see what else we can add in here. We haven't gone through too many of the other drum kits yet. Let's try raw hits one, effects down. I think we can add a lot more impact to the chorus. We have a lot of swells and sweeps leading up, but not much going down yet. So let's try some of these down impacts. Let's try this one on the melodic part, our pre-chorus. comes in just there. Let's just grab our side chains. This is pumping with a kick in the rim. I really like the movement of that effect sample. And I want these to stay down a little bit longer after the sample hits, so I'm going to push the release up just a little bit. Let's check out our impacts. Definitely gonna use that one somewhere. Probably, I would say, leading into like the halfway point. Call that channel our tambourine. Let's see what other cool little ornamental. Jesus. Let's see what other cool ornamental percussions we can find in here. Ooh. 
I like this one a lot. This kind of fits my vibe too. Maybe it's like in the second half, it's like a downbeat, side chains on there. And I want this one to be 100%. So maybe it's good that we're not doing these all in a group. I know a lot of times you see people just put everything but the kick and snare in a group and then put this on it, but I'm doing different amounts for each instrument, like how hard I want it to be ducked. So in this case, we're just gonna load up tons of compressor instances. And we're just gonna turn this down in the mix. Hey. Put this on the downbeat over here. Try natural. This might work too, like right in the beginning, real quiet. I might even throw a little echo on this too. These little folders still throwing me off. I've been using this for like a half a year now and I still can't find, or is it, oh, delay and loop, it's here at the top. All right, and let's put my quarter note echo on here. I'm gonna do the equal loudness shortcut. This I love, instead of putting it in a rack. Maybe a little bit more on feedback and let's do ping pong. So it kind of bounces back and forth. And I'm gonna keep going through my drum kits. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, I was looking for something like that. And I'll put it right in the verse and we'll put one right here too. And also I just want to throw some extra reverb on here. So I'm going to go back into my hybrid reverb. And let's drop this before our compressors. And I'm just going to use whatever reverb they have here by default. And just extend this a little bit. Much better. And I'm also going to filter these in a little bit. Let's go into our auto filter. I feel like these plucks start out a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to use this auto filter. Pretty much making this whole beat, uh, mixing it with stock plugins. Now let's just copy our automation over to here too, so it does the same thing. Let's check out our voices. This might be a cool little effect that we can make out of this dry sound, and it's already in E too. We just got to transpose it up one because our beat is now in F. Let's go up one like that. And let's drop the same quarter note delay that we made for our vibra slap right onto here. And oh, my CPU is getting a little bit tied up. So let's just boost this up to like 256. Let's see what other hat loops we can put in here. So let's take this loop. This used to be 150. And let's just make sure our loop goes all the way out to the end of the clip because it's cut right on time. Now I'm just going to take this loop and I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to use command right or left, I'm sorry. And let's just nudge it a little bit earlier. And finally, I just want to add like a little snare that does some fills. And for this, I'm just going to double click it and put it on a sampler. And I might even use the arpeggiator just to make it go real fast. And we're just going to use those two little snares as a quick tiny drum fill going into our first pre-chorus. Just gonna hit Command J and let's just zoom in and, oops, looks like I was a little bit early. So I'm just gonna quantize it to the nearest eighth note. Let's just do 50%. Like I said, for this, we're not gonna quantize it 100% really on anything in this beat. Perfect. And this will be our snare fill. Actually, my 
point start since there's not really any other support in this part. Let's have the bass start the whole the whole pre. And then we're back into our chorus. So there you have it, how to arrange an entire pop track starting from very humble beginnings, just a simple bass loop. We used all the tricks in Ableton 11 and new plugins to put together this track very simply so that me and Kara can write to it in the next video on her channel. And this is gonna be episode two of how to write a song from scratch. So you guys really saw it here from scratch on my channel when we put the beat together. So when that video drops, I'm gonna add the link to it in the description so you guys can see how we finished this song out with vocals using Pro Tools next. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna get your hands on any of the Whole Loops products that we use to put this beat together, I'll put the links in the description and catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out. Down. Do, 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 do.